Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be using lots and lots of multiple layers in our artwork and showing you how I sort of build up. So this is sort of what I do when I'm really not sure what I want to do on a page. I tend to start off with this technique which is just using some collage papers in the background and just tearing them up and gluing them down with gel medium. So these are all a series of um, painted papers. Um, they're gel print papers that I have been playing around with recently um, or using I think um, I'm mostly using, sorry, stencil gloss stencils. So most of these papers are done on greaseproof paper, which is kind of like deli paper. Um, if you're in Australia, we can get greaseproof paper, a huge like 60 meter roll for three bucks from our local supermarket. Um, but in America, you've got access to deli paper. Uh, greaseproof paper, just be careful when you get it though, it's not the same as baking paper. Baking paper has a silicon component component to it um, so you want want the stuff that looks like tissue paper basically that it was it, 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 it absorbs up um, grease so um, if it goes translucent and grease goes on it it's um, a good a good paper to use the reason I like using this particularly in my journals over regular copy paper is it's just so much easier to glue down particularly gel medium and um, quite often I just gel print onto um, computer copy paper but when I'm particularly doing lots of overlapping stuff like I've done on this page where I've filled the entire two page spread with um, gel prints it gets a little bit bulky so if you can use thinner papers and um, that's great if you can't get your hands on it and um, just gift wrap tissue paper is a brilliant alternative to use as well so you can see I've just torn the pieces into lumps and chunks I haven't really worried about color combinations it's not the prettiest page but it's not supposed to be because I'm not finished yet. It was just putting some pattern and interest into the background just so I had a starting point. And for a lot of people who start art journaling, a lot of you know anxiety is around the, the blank page. You know, what do I do? I've got a blank page staring at me. Well, within five minutes, I didn't have a blank page staring at me anymore. Um, so it can be you know, quite cathartic just gluing stuff down on your page. One of the things that I do when I've done something like this is I tend to stencil over it and I usually choose white to stencil over. The reason is because it's me, I haven't left any white space on my page. So adding some white gives my eye somewhere to rest on the page, but also by adding a stencil, whether it's in white paint or any other color paint, and I'm actually putting it over the pieces, um, lots of pieces at once, it's gives a bit more flow to my page and ties it together so they're not separate pieces of paper anymore there's there's a bit of a flow to it they're actually just the background and I've got these images and um, this flour, flourish stencil from Dina Wakeley sort of sitting over the top um, so it's just a really handy little trick to have in your bags when things are going a little bit hay haywire try stenciling over the top um, and seeing if that helps tie your page together a little bit more so you can see already it's starting to look a little bit more cohesive still very very busy um, but it's looking a little bit more cohesive now now because I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> I wanted it to be a little bit brighter I've broken out my neons which I haven't done in a little while um, neon paints are one of my favorite ways to really boost the color on a page they are a translucent paint um, so they act like a filter over your page. They just, you know, make the colors underneath really, really pop. And by putting them over the white, you get these beautiful, really bright and bold sections to your page. So um, if you've got the opportunity, there's lots of different um, neon paints on the market. So I'm sure you can get some from somewhere. Um, but they're, they're lots of fun to use. So because I didn't have enough white on here already, I'm going back in again with another stencil. This is a script stencil. And I'm just being a little bit particular about where I'm putting it um, and sort of adding some little chunks randomly onto my page. Again, this one's, even though it's quite loose and open, it's um, got a little bit more white on it. So it sort of just blocks out a little bit more of the background. Now, the good thing is, and you're sort of thinking, oh, you did all, had all those painted papers in the background. Now you can't really see any of them. Well, I can still see the 
the patterns peeking through, particularly in real life. But also, I wasn't attached to that background. It was just me filling in the background, trying to work out what I actually wanted to do. So, you know, on days like that, I'm, I'm more than happy to just keep adding um, layers over the top until I'm happy. Um, and even if I covered over all of this with a you know coat of black paint, it would be fine because getting to this point and then covering it over black paint was still productive. I still got to do something out of it. So um, don't feel bad if you get to a point and then just you know cover over half of it. That's fine because that's your choice. It's um, I know it can be confronting for some people when they do a background and then you sort of get rid of half of it, but it's it's okay. Then I decided I wanted to paint in my face. And one of the reasons for this is so I could actually see it a little bit more on my page. And I've got a palette of colors out here, a little bit different from what I usually use. Um, so I had the yellow and the green. So I start off with a mid-tone color, which is sort of the yellow. It's a bright color, um, but it sort of blends into the background a little. Same with the, the green. Then I'm moving into my darker colors in my shadow area. So that's sort of the um, the turquoise and the ocean colour and then I'm adding the lapis and the night um, at the edges of the face to make it really really dark. Um, it is going to look alien when you do this, it's okay. Um, it will continue to look alien until you actually put in the whites of the eyes again and make the eyes look realistic. Um, a lot of people sort of get to this point and start to panic going oh this doesn't look right. Uh, so some people actually start off by doing the eyes first so the eyes really pop out because um, if your eyes look correct your face looks correct that's the, our, our human brains are designed to look for eyes to make things make sense so um, if if you really struggle with it uh, put the eyes in first so I discovered when I was doing this that I would painted a little bit lower than her eye actually was so as soon as you put the whites of the eyes in, it starts to look normal again. It's, it's just magic, it really is. Uh, so I added in the extra yellow under the, her eyes to sort of build up that um, where her eye was supposed to go again. Now I'm just using some Stabilo Woodies, which are just a water soluble pencil, to add in a little bit of detail. And I'm going in with my Stabilo Oil pencil to add in some really scribbly lines. Now the thing I love about the Dina Wakeley collage tissues is there are already sort of scribbly lines to begin with. And I'm just using the lines that I can, it's a bit hard to see on screen, but I can still see them. So I'm basically just tracing over what's already there, adding in a few extra lines, particularly in the hair. But um, you've, you've got that little template underneath, so it's not quite as scary as you think it would be. The final thing that I'm doing, which does seem a little bit scary, I know, to some people, is I'm just scribbling over some colours that I've used in the paint in the background over the top. And the reason for that is that just gives extra texture to the, the piece. Um, and you'll see that in the close-up. So with the hair, um, I'm just putting in some white Stabilo pencil as well to add some highlights. So um, I'm sure people have heard me say this before on my channel, but I'm always fascinated by this image because it always reminds me of David Bowie. Um, this one at the end doesn't necessarily as much, but certainly halfway through it was sort of giving me real Ziggy Stardust um, vibes. <laughs> so it's, um, it's funny how images sort of stick in your mind for some, some reason. The final thing I'm doing is adding a quote onto the page and I chose it will all make sense one day. And that sort of, for me, has been summing up my last few weeks, months of stuff that's going on. Um, hopefully it all will make sense one day. But it also kind of um, reflects this art journal page too, particularly sort of doing the background where you're starting off with the painted papers and then you're putting stuff over the top and putting stuff over the top. It all comes together in the end. And the same with the face. It was looking really, really alien-esque. It still does because it's green and blue. but. Um, when you put the eyes in it suddenly makes sense again so sometimes we just need to um, with our art journals 
be a bit more trusting. We're not very trusting of ourselves, I find, when we, we do this. And particularly when I uh, teach in classes, I always have to say it's okay if it looks terrible at the moment, it won't at the end. That's, that's part of the process, which is why I decided to put this quote on, which is um, another one from Dina Wakeley. Um, and says fall in love with the process. My favourite part of the process, particularly in art journaling, which is what I'm journaling in the background here, is the problem solving. I love it when I get problems when I art journal, you know, if something doesn't quite work or a shading doesn't work or, you know, my background looks unbalanced because that's the creative bit to me. How do I solve that problem? How do I make it look better? What can I add to this page to, to change it, to fix it, to make me happy with it? Um, and that's where I fall in love with the process of art journaling and being creative. So, yeah, that's my, my philosophy behind what I do. Um, but, yeah, so this is the layered up page, basically. And you can see the te um, texture in the background from the, the colour pencil over the top. And it is just about putting multiple layers on. And a lot of people tend to stop too early. So try a page and... Keep adding layers until you're really, really happy with it and see what you come up with. Until next time, bye for now.